Stoke single called for in the first run of the game as Poe gets started. Good looking straight from Poe. Not a lot of timing, but time for a couple of runs. The readers underway now. There'll be time for just the one run. Fraser is the fieldsman. And that is the end of over number four now, and New Zealand a five without loss. Oh, bowling! De Freitas bowls pro, a big blow for England. And New Zealand strike trouble in the sixth over. They are seven for the loss of one. Well, it appeared to me as though Crow played that one on. It was just short of a length, may have nipped back a little bit, but let's see if he just plays across it and drags it back onto the stumps. He does, it's a big inside edge there onto his stumps, not able to get right in behind it. And Crow will be disappointed with that one. Let's have a look at Martin Crow. Plays this one on and slams it into the leg stump. And that's the end of the New Zealand captain. De Freitas is delighted and so are the rest of the England side. Oh, good shot. That's through. De Freitas diving, unable to stop it. It won't go all the way. Tough little round from the third man down. Right? Freitas on his way to Jones. Oh, he swings it away. What did that come off? He's not walking. There's a loud appeal. No response from umpire Graham Cowan. Well, I like the way Gooch then waved his players on. He, a lamb was standing there, where he still is, beside the batsman. And um, he can't believe it, but Graham Gooch was very quick from mid-off, come and wave his players to get on with the game, and I like to see that. And he then had a word with the Freitas, and um, equilibrium or normality has been restored. Good thinking, good captaincy there by Graham Gooch. Square this time, and he'll pick up two Andrew Jones. So, uh, some sort of impetus starting perhaps with the New Zealand innings. A blow, losing Martin Crow early. This one he's well, there you are. That's yes. exactly what I meant. Quite good shot, four runs. Straight through to the extra cover boundary. Oh, he's got an edge on it. That'll be four. A fine one. Over slips. Down to the boundary for four. Driving. Oh, he's beaten the field. That should go to the boundary in front of the number one stand. Reasonably short boundary there. And the outfield certainly quickening up. I think the Jews well gone now with a bit of sun on it. And Andrew Jones, a good shot. A chase for Gow. He'll get it inside the boundary. It's slowing. And they come back for three. Over the top goes Andrew Jones. That's a lovely shot. Four runs. That was the shot of the day, wasn't it, really? A marvellous stroke by him. And, of course, small is not his only medium fast. And the ball on a good length. And just following through, it's a very comfortable stroke to play. There's plenty of room over the top of the fielders. And didn't he hit it well? Nicely played by Reed. This might go down to the fence. And yes, it does. So Richard Reed, with an angle back, puts the ball away down the third man off the spin-up for four runs. Good shot. Four runs. New Zealand's 50 is up in the 19th over. Brilliant batting by Andrew Jones. And here's Graham Gooch. Reed lifting. And four more to New Zealand. Just back to the square. Stirring stuff, this. And, of course, these two, Gooch and Tuttle, are England's two most suspect bowlers. They aren't, well, Tuttle's a regular bowler, but spinners can be painful in this sort of cricket. Gooch is only really an occasional bowler. And this is where New Zealand have got to pick up the larger part of their income. And these two are doing brilliantly just now. Oh, this is in the air. Top edge. 
He's gone. Richard Reed out. Very straightforward catch to Alan Lamb, who was in a short position on the leg side, looking to sweep it. He got a top edge. It just lobbed up. And Richard Reed is out. Well, Rob Old Tucknell, we said that he covered those straight hits. So therefore, Reed tried to improvise and hit him across the line. There's a short boundary out there, but of course, there's danger in that. And the danger was there all the time. He went for it, and on this occasion, he's failed. So 66 for two in the 21st over. Well, there we are. A couple of runs down the third man. Last man, all coming back for three, Andrew Jones. Well run. It certainly was. He, he got into a position really to pull it over mid wicket, I thought initially. But then perhaps the ball didn't bounce as high as he anticipated, but he ended up off the back foot, whacking it back very straight, just on the onside of the wicket for a magnificent boundary. the 50 Jones is uh, 21st one day 50 and what a great triumph for him he's not the most glamorous of batsmen but really it has been a tremendous performance by him a fantastic record 98 for two is the score it's his second 50 in successive internationals of course he got 64 in Wellington and he's also reached 2,000 one day runs in 52 matches across the line yes well there's there it is the foot straight down the pitch or across towards off stump not able to play it playing round the front of his pad Gooch confident and New Zealand lose their third wicket at 98 so a confident sweet stroke here from great match just brings in the single Yes, well, that's New Zealand's 100 up. Oh, that's good running from Great Batch. Came down, just worked it onside. And England with mid on up. Keach not able to prevent the single. So Great Batch coming to the crease and showing an ability to keep the... The run's ticking over. So often, of course, when uh, sides lose wickets, they tend to lose time. Nicely glided. That's some small will stop this one. Great batch is coming back for the second, and that is well run. It's a good throw. Two from Gladstone Small. Uh oh, this is trouble. And that's out. Great batch gone for 12. New Zealand now four down. Alan Lamb has his second catch. Great batch completely miscuing. Another wicket for De Freitas. And New Zealand are uh, four wickets down. And this is the 36th over. Four for 120. Great batch knew as soon as he'd made a top edge contact with that, but it was history. Mark Great batch gone for 12. New Zealand 120 for four. Harris lifting, oh, he's got a hold of it, nice shot. Took a bit of a risk, didn't quite get to the pitch of it, but went through with it, and sent it away to the fence for four. That's the small bowling. Well, that's just wide of the fieldsman. Jones has got a couple of runs for this. They may even look for a third as the ball goes to Stewart, and good running by Harris, who's very, very quick. But that wasn't far away from the outstretched hand of Robin Smith. Oh dear, mix up here and run out, surely, yes. Andrew Jones has run out. Quick thinking by Gladstone Small. A real mix up between Jones and Harris. 
And that's the end of Andrew Jones. The tragedy here for New Zealand because Andrew Jones was struck on the pad and he took off for a run. Harris looked like he wanted one and then he was sent back. Andrew Jones threw his bat. That's uh, an interesting move. <laughs> So Andrew Jones gone, the fine innings from him, and New Zealand 135 for five. Great ovation for Ian Smith as he wanders on to Eden Park to replace Andrew Jones, just run out for 64. So five down, New Zealand. Gladstone Small to Smith. Smith gets it away fine, and it might be fine enough to beat Stewart. It is. Tuffton, in fact, four runs. Yeah. And he's done well too. He just clips it over there, and that's four runs for Chris Harris. Well, the crowd show what they think of it. I don't know whether he's the most valuable player of all, but I tell you what, he's the most improved young player I've seen over here, I think, this time. He's done very well this year. There he is, just picking up Lofting Gooch over Gower and into the gap between mid wicket and long on. And Harris has moved to 16 from only 18 balls. Smith down to Fraser. Oh, he's bumbled it again. Angus Fraser, who's done some wonderful work around the boundary, but on two occasions in this series, once in Christchurch and once here now at Eden Park, he's allowed the ball to go straight through his legs. And the vast crowd would like to see Ian Smith belting the ball to and over the boundary but it's Fraser back into the attack well they've had their wish the first ball of Fraser that's going away to the boundary Alex Stewart's not going to stop that what a splendid blow into the front of the uh, that old uh, pavilion over there to the right and uh, a marvellous stroke out by Smith who came down the pitch making room to leg and played it very well this is the last ball of his eighth over. Harris goes high over the top. That's going to be six. That's a magnificent strike from Christopher Harris. Well, the crowd loved that. The last ball of the over. And Fraser, whose first seven overs conceded only five runs, has had that total exceeded in one hit by Chris Harris. It's 173 for five. 45 overs, five left. attempt that lit off. Gooch almost hung on to that one. Yes, Graham Gooch uh, moved a long way. He takes a wee while to get underway, doesn't he? But uh, he dived away, got a hand to it, really thumped this one, Ian Smith, giving himself room. And it was always going away from Gooch. He reached a long way, just got a left hand to it, but down it went. Ian Smith now on strike to Fraser. Well, that's well hit. Stanford Smith caught up with that very well indeed. Short boundary down there at uh, Backward Square. But Ian Smith really climbed into that. One of the few loose deliveries today we've seen from Angus Fraser. I think he might have been put off his stride just a little by this assault in the last few overs from Chris Harris and Ian Smith. And that's a marvellous shot from uh, Ian Smith for four. Oh, that's huge hits. Stewart's going round. He can't get to it. The longest boundary on the ground out there. Smith couldn't quite get it over the rope, but he's back for two. Oh, he's got hold of this one, Smith. And that's up on the terraces. Now, there was no question of that one going for six. That cleared very easily. And that's the New Zealand 200 up. He really got hold of it well, didn't he? Yeah, so when I was talking before about the ball being bowled into the slot, the correct slot for Smithy's arc. That one was. The last ball of this over. And it, away it goes again. And one bounce this time. Four runs. What a good over from New Zealand's point of view. 207 for five. Yorker straight through Harris. What a good innings from Harris. Clean bowl by Fraser. 
So he's going to leave Eden Park, having done a very good job for his side. Yes, right up in the block hole to, to Harris. The exact position that Fraser would have wanted earlier. And the sixth wicket down now for New Zealand at 209. He's on strike to De Philip De Freitas. Yeah! And he thumps that one straight. What a good shot. Four runs. Well, good shot here from Cairns. De Freitas quite rightly trying to get it right up. Very full. But he gave himself room. And he thought that that was where the gap was. It certainly was. And rather surprising that Gooch didn't have a man back there. But Cairns taking advantage of that fact and smashing it through the vacant mid-off. Yes, well done. Certainly rather surprising. No one back and reasonably straight. But Chris Cairns cashed in. Good on him. He goes again, but this may have time the man is back. Graham Gooch, the skipper down there. That's another run, though, to the total. 2-1-5. And Smith on strike. New Zealand after 15 were only 34 for one. And then they got to 76 at the halfway stage. So to get through now in the 50th over there, as you see, at 215 for six, is now starting to make their score very, very much more competitive. What a great knock from Ian Smith. He's on 43. He's on strike here in the last over. The crowd really egging him on. The hole down the leg side. He's got hold of it. Four. Well, I was about to say, well, bold to Freitas. And somehow Smith managed to get back on ball. 47. Three balls remaining. He's hit this one down the ground. He won't get four for it. They're looking for two. In fact, Cairns is coming back. Oh, this is suicide. But it does bring Smith back on strike. Cairns is on his way. That was uh, sacrifice stuff. Yes, it was. He did sacrifice to make sure that Smithy got back to strike. They still get one run. So nothing really very much lost. There was certainly never going to be two here. They endeavoured. And Cairns decided to come back and sacrifice. He's not even in frame. So New Zealand's seventh wicket down with the total now up to 220. He's hit this one. He could be caught. No, it's dropping just short of Gladstone Small, but they'll come back for two. So there's one ball to go, but the crowd have forgotten about that. They're running on. Of course, there was a wide, so we're going to have a bit of a delay here. This is a shame. But uh, no doubt we'll restore things to order very shortly. Notice the Mexican wave goes uh, <laughs> anti-clockwise. That's right, you yeah, haven't sorted that out either. Here we are, last ball. Oh, he's hit it through the covers. If they'll get certainly one, they should try and come back for two. No, they're not. So there's the end of the innings. A fine knock from Ian Smith. 224. Well, didn't New Zealand get up from what was seemingly a very poor start? Here's the scoreboard then for New Zealand at the end of 50 overs. Remember, at the end of 40 overs, they were 139 for five. So New Zealand have scored 85 runs from the last 10 overs. What a marvellous performance. First by Chris Harris and Ian Smith. Uh, Chris Cairns came in for a brief time, and then Ian Smith bludgeoning away until the end of the innings. 51 not out he was from just 30 deliveries, and that really was a great partnership between uh, Smith and uh, Chris Harris, which has uh, put New Zealand into a good position. 224 for seven from 50 overs. Looking now at the England bowling figures, and the medium paces uh, all suffered in the last 10 over onslaught. Angus Fraser, who had bowled uh, six overs for four runs, finished with uh, still a fine line, one for 31 from 10 overs and three maidens. De Freitas, two for 51. Gladstone Small, none for 51. He had two maidens, so he was very economical early on after conceding nine in his first over. Gooch, one for 40, and Tufnell bowled very well at times today. A good loop from him, uh, the left-arm spinner, one for 46 from 10 overs.
All right, that was the highlights of the New Zealand innings in the third and deciding Bank of New Zealand Cup one day. International between New Zealand and England here back on February the 16th. I'm afraid that uh, today we've had rain stopping play in the test match. They began half an hour late. They went out for 45 minutes, but about 12 overs were bowled. New Zealand getting through to 223 for five. Let's take a look outside now and see uh, what the weather conditions are like. And we can tell you that uh, the rain, in fact, has stopped. The ground staff are out there doing a little bit of work to uh, try and take the moisture off the top of the covers. Uh, with the rain having stopped, we just have to uh, wipe up a bit of the excess moisture, both on the covers and on the outfield. And hopefully we'll have some play here in the not-too-distant future. Obviously the rain has cleared. We have a bit of sunshine. And the Sri Lankans just relaxing in their dressing room. And we're privileged to uh, have our cameramen in there just to uh, see them relaxing and waiting for the rain to stop play. There's... Uh, Winawera, who's not playing in this game. And looks like Rimish Ratnaika there in the corner. So they're just uh, relaxing, perhaps uh, writing a few letters home or signing the autograph sheets, perhaps. Not much you can do when the weather affects play in a test match. They just have to wait for things to clear, for conditions to improve before we can get underway again. In total today, uh, we've had uh, nearly an hour's play loss. So at this stage, if they could get back on the park say within five minutes, which is uh, highly unlikely, we'd still be able to have a full day's play. But it looks as if we're going to have uh, a reduced amount of play today because of the weather conditions. Now, we've got a score through from Sabina Park in Kingston, Jamaica. Remember, the West Indies in their first innings yesterday were out for 264. Australia, in reply at stumps on day two, have done well. 266 for four through the board for Australia. Jeff Mar made 69, Mark Taylor 58, Alan Border 31, uh, Dean Jones made naught but at stumps, David Boone 62 not out and Mark War 9 not out. It would appear from that batting lineup that uh, Steve War has been left out of the test team again and he's been replaced by his twin brother Mark. So Australia at stumps 266 for four. They're two runs in front with six wickets in hand and that's the score from the end of day two at Sabina Park in Kingston, Jamaica. Rain has stopped play here though with New Zealand in their first innings 200 23 for 5. 29 runs added in 45 minutes this morning before rain stopped play. We'll take a break and return very soon with uh, more from that exciting one day international between New Zealand and England. Pretty soon. In the meantime, we'll go back to that one day international between New Zealand and England, the third and deciding uh, match in the Bank of New Zealand Cup Series, with New Zealand in 50 overs making 224 for seven. Let's take a look at England's reply with Graham Gooch facing. Chris Pringle starts with a wide, as he did in Wellington. In fact, he started with two wides in Wellington. So Harris will be one of the bowlers used by Martin Crow today, and he bowled splendidly. Larson, another one who, who came into it after Lamb took two fours at the end of one over when it looked as if Lamb had decided that he had to hit Larson out of the attack, whether that was because he didn't really rate him or whether it because he thought he rated him and wanted to take a chance against him. Four oh, picks up here, and he's in, but just. Well, you notice there that Atherton in going down, and when he was turned around, he slipped. And I was saying earlier that the pitch is very, very hard indeed. And it's almost shiny. And in fact, when the heavy roller was on it, Grant, it looked as if rather than going across it sometimes, it was actually sliding. And so it is very slippery indeed. And Beautifully driven by Gooch. The first bounder of the innings, a classic off go by the England captain. Field for LBW. Sounded a touch wooden. Goes for the big shot, it nearly carried. Mark Greatbatch doing well, diving forward and just picking it up on the half volley, but he hit that very hard indeed, did uh, Atherton. Yes, well, there's the indication if you are wayward with the delivery, it's still very makeable with the field up. A good save by a great batch. Interesting little necktie he's got on there. As the fashion's changed, Glenn. Or well, swung away. He's got this over the top of the infield. Didn't get a lot of uh, power on it. Come back for two. They may look for three, but I don't think Gooch is too interested, and uh, probably wisely so. So the end of the over. England a 15 without loss. 
over the top. And that's going to be four. He's swung it away very well, has Graham Gooch, to the mid-wicket fence for four. That's a good shot. And that'll go through to the fence for four. End of the Watson over. A bit more expensive, that one, as England moves on to 25 for no wicket. Good-looking shot. Well stopped. Mark Breakback's hurling himself at that one. Well, it makes all the difference to be good in the field. Just straying slightly. Wide of off stump and slashed away by Atherton. And a great stop by Great Batch. Saved a certain four. A good looking shot. Cooch just easing that one away. away and that really has run on. I'm surprised. I didn't think that was going to go for four, but it just seemed to keep going. It's a relatively long boundary out there as well. Well, that was an offside push. He did very well. I mean, it wasn't a bad delivery at all as a loosener, particularly from Cairns. But it was just pushed in front of point and kept on running. So very well timed from Graham Gooch. He's on to 21. It looks like we've got a problem here. Ken Rutherford, hop he was one of the men that chased that. He's hobbling off. I think he pulled a muscle there. Obviously looking in discomfort. So he's making his way off Eden Park. a wide delivery what a fine shot up and wide and hammered through the covers so a very expensive over just cans again bowling to Atherton oh it's in the air and lucky for Atherton he just lobbed it over Ken's head and a short of Andrew Jones and a bit of a lucky break for Mike Atherton That's a beautiful shot again. The big crowd at Eden Park is being treated to some marvellous batting here by Gooch. Loft it. Oh, and put down. Richard Reid got a hand on it. Just couldn't quite hang on. And Graham Gooch has a life at 36. I think you'll see he was almost on his way down when yes, he, he'd just gone to the top of his jump a little bit too soon. And needed to have hung up there in the air like a basketballer. Gavin Larson bowling to Gooch. Oh, he's bowled him. That one kept a little bit low, snuck through onto the leg stump, and Gooch looking to flick it away really didn't get down to it. Gavin Larson was the bowler. And just not bouncing very high at all. Gooch trying to force it on the onside. And over went leg stump. Oh, edged very fine, but well played because it's going to run away for four. No slip in at the stage, as well there might not be. But uh, very well judged, Mike Atherton. Catch, and he's out. Martin Crowe takes an excellent catch. Atherton's out, and England have lost both openers in the space of a couple of overs. Atherton out for... 34, it's 91 for two in the 25th. Just perhaps holding up a little on him, tried to work it on side, very low catch to mid-wicket. Good catch there to dismiss Atherton. the full flourish and it's heading out to the boundary Pringle won't cut that off lovely stroke from David Gower half volley outside the off stump and Gower cashes in and England's hundred is registered in the 27th boat and things slowing down and that New Zealand getting the feel that they might be clawing their way back into this game well that's a good shot from Lamb it's a short boundary there and it's all the way that was a good shot. Larson, a bit of width to land, and a little bit over-tossed. Yes, good shot. The minute I say that uh, they're not looking so good, bang. 
lovely shot from Lamb. Ball slung away. Lamb getting hold of this one, a bit unorthodox, but effective. Swung it away over the infield. There's no one deep at mid-wicket. And so that's four runs. Good shot. Looking to swing it away. It's beaten Smith running away off the pad. And in fact, it's going away for four. So every run valuable now. That was a bit surprising because it came off the, the pads of Gow, didn't it? It was just his pad. And it went fairly close to Smith, but diving at it, he just didn't quite have the stretch to be able to get all the way there. But Gow has lived, and that's the way he sometimes dies. He certainly dies that way fairly often, doesn't he? Oh, he swung this one away. It could be caught. It is. Andrew Jones in the deep. Packs the catch. David Gow is gone. Tried to swing Chris Harris away to a ball that was reasonably well up and about the line of leg stump. And Andrew Jones did well in the deep. Well, an irresponsible shot, really, from Gow. Hitting it straight down to the only player who's out there at this stage with still uh, 19 overs to go. I don't really think that shot is one that he'll look back on with too much relish. But I think it might just be that the ball beforehand gave him a bit of a worry, and so he was unsettled. So Gow out for 13. Another breakthrough for New Zealand. England are 118 for three in the 31st over. Willie Watson then. He's still got five men inside the circle. Chance of a run out. Home. Great throw by Chris Harris. He can't quite believe it. Steve Woodward was the man who had to make the decision. He said that Lamb was home, but I think that was a very close call. Look at this. Hit into the mid-wicket field. Harris, one of the great fieldsmen in the New Zealand team. And he was just in. Good call, Steve Woodward. Very close decision, but brilliant fielding again by Chris Harris. And Ron pulled away, and that's four. Short boundary down there at Backwood Square. So Harris is dropping it short. And up to four balls in the 35th over, one, three, three for three. Really dragged down short, and a bit of a free hit there to such a short boundary in front of the main stand at Eden Park. That required run rate for England has dropped back by 0.06 of a run in the last uh, couple of overs or so. So it's 90 off 15. Willie Watson's to bowl. Robin Smith's the batsman facing. Well, that's a fine shot. That's four. Beating the man at short mid-wicket. And it's shots like that which could really uh, turn the tide as far as England are concerned. Just wide of Ian Smith. Watson chasing valiantly. The ball hasn't got a lot on it, fortunately for New Zealand. And Watson manages to save one run. And leg by, signalled by Roger McCarg. And England have 150 up now. Lamb goes over the top, lovely hit. And four runs. Good shot out of Lamb. Off the last ball of Chris Harris's final over and England 161 for three at the end of 39. He's a good improviser Lamb and of course it is important to be able to do such things as that in one day cricket. To beat the field the bowlers thinking defensively trying to, to, to stop you and you've just got to try and unravel the crossword puzzle ahead of him. Lofted lovely shot. Six. That's a marvellous hit. He really collected that low and hard. When okay. it's in the slot there, Lamy doesn't miss, does he? I mean, th that is absolutely in the slot for him. He plays that one beautifully. He played it down here a couple of overs back, didn't he, on Harris? And it's meat and drink to him. Edge. He's out, and he knows it. He waited for the umpire, but he knew he had the little tickle. Chris Cairns has the wicket. Alan Lamb is out. 171 for four. Well, there you are, you see. Just as we thought it was all England, this happens. And you can see, yes, the deflection. And um, once again, it's back in the melting pot with a slight stutter. 171 for four. The run rate 
climbing the required rate, 6.5 and over now. Nice shot from Alex Stewart. Jones is covering. Now that's Excellent good play by Andrew Jones. That really did look like two, but Jones cut it down to one. hit that like a kicking horse. My goodness me, that's Smith's favourite stroke. They were four of the best runs really one could wish to see. Wowee, hit that hard. Very short by Cairns, and Smith gave it everything. And Andrew Jones was close, as you could see, but he didn't have a chance. Chris Cairns has got the breakthrough. Marvellous catch by Ian Smith with Alex Stewart looking to play the hook. Top edge. And Ian Smith pulls in a beauty and a vital one as well. England are five down for 185 in the 45th over. Alex Stewart gone for three. And let's just see the height of this, see if it is above shoulder high. Well, it's very difficult to tell perhaps we can get a side on later on, but he went for the hook, got the top edge and almost getting over the top of Smithy. Stewart going for three, 185 for five. Looking for a bit of room, there could be a mix-up to Freitas. No, he's back. These two, if you remember, got into the most hopeless and, and knotty tangle, didn't they, at the Basin on Wednesday, when De Freitas, in fact, went by half the length of the pitch. De Freitas is very keen to start with, and I can see a run-out situation developing, and of course the pressures of this sort of moment uh, it, it is exactly right for producing run-out sort of situations. Oh, bowling! Well, that isn't a run-out, that is bold, and that is absolutely crucial. Smith is gone. He's failed again at an absolutely crucial moment. The other day he had a slog, a wild slog and was bowled. Then that ball was really, it seemed to me, to be pretty straight. And he was trying with a last-minute jerk to run it down to third man. I thought that was a terrible stroke. Yes, he gave himself room. It was a good ball on the line of off stump. But look where he played it from and through it went. It hit the off stump and Smith is gone. One nine four for six. That was an awful shot, wasn't it? But, I mean, I don't know what he was doing. I, I, had he come forward and pushed to extra cover, he, but he was... You see, he came forward, played his way from the body, was trying to run it to third man. I mean, it was a terrible stroke. It was, it was awful. That's nightmare stuff from Robin Smith. To listen to the crowd. It's, really, it's wonderful. Oh, that... It's four runs. It's four runs. Crucial they are. Well, all's fair in love and war. That's what happens. You get the edge. It goes away for four. And that is the way it goes. 200 for six. Down the ground. It's going to be out. It's going to oh, be out. He's, he's caught there at mid-off. And De Freitas has gone. At the score now, England. 200 for seven. And just listen to the noise. There was Martin Crowell. It was an easy one. A dolly. History is repeating itself. England are slumping. Their calypso collapsing yet again. De Freitas out. Caught at mid-off. It certainly is. 200 for seven, England. Oh, he's swung it over the top. It might sneak through for four. No, Andrew Jones there. So two more. Jack Russell prepared to throw the bat at anything, and they ha he has to. I thought for a moment, oh goodness, he's going to hole out. Then I thought it was four. The crowd thought everything. Flags were hit. People yelled. And uh, I don't know, children are going to remember this, aren't they, to that dying day. And telling their grandchildren it's just that sort of a game of cricket. This is a whole, a whole seething ocean here at um, Eden Park. It's fantastic. He certainly wasn't. He tried to swing it away, and there it was. It got through. It hit the off stump. Gladstone Small gone. 203 for eight. Well, big Angus Fraser makes his way to the crease. He's not the worst, is he, uh, Henry? 
Angus Fraser. Well, he's player. a strong chap. We remember he scored runs, didn't he, at Melbourne when England almost beat Australia in that last qualifying match in mid-January. He's a great trier. While he's there, there's life yet. Um, the odds are against it. It's all attention, but really that asking rate is getting higher and higher. So we've got just nine more balls to go and 20 runs to win. And, and really, with two wickets in hand, that's a significant figure too, which is not there. Um, as the French would say, ce n'est pas possible. Yes, I think so. Oh, well, that's not a bad shot. It's four it's runs bad. too. Good old Jack Russell, he picked that up brilliantly. And away it went absolutely into the gap. Um, Jones couldn't get anywhere near that. Good ball in. It fell in, and that's what's going to happen in this sort of situation. The boys and girls come running on. They've got to get off. It's not over yet. It's not quite Calypso time. Russell walks slowly out, but that's what happens in this sort of pressure. The tailenders can't cope. It's 2.09 for 9. Russell is out. Bowled there by Cairns for 13. Jack Russell trying to swing it away, had to go for it, he missed it, well bowled, Chris Cairns, Russell bowled, 209 for 9. Ball tried to swing it away, they'll get one. And three inside the circle, so he had to bring fine leg up inside the circle. Pringle the ball. Not a bad ball really, because it's only one run. They need more. And it's Pringle to Fraser. We might get four. He's got four. My goodness me, eight from two balls now. That was the perfect Harrow drive, wasn't it? Down to fine leg. Gosh, has this match got a twist in the tail for us yet? Two balls to go. England need eight to win. The score is 217 for nine. Mystery, have you ever, do you remember anything like this? No, this is amazing. And that was a dodgy area, wasn't it? And that was the debate before the over started. They brought the fine leg up because they needed four inside the circle. I wonder if they'll rue that decision. But who knows? Who could have predicted that? But the old French cut came out of the cupboard. And down it went for four. So eight runs needed. Fraser on strike. Three Chris's, Chris Harris, Chris Pringle and Chris Cairns, the new sensations of the New Zealand One Day team so successful this year with three matches, uh, three wins against Sri Lanka and uh, two wins out of three matches against England. Marvellous series, that, uh, that Bank of New Zealand uh, Cup series against England. Well, here at Eden Park, we've got...